oysters. They live, they die. Some people like to eat them. Why should we care? What is so special about an oyster? Well, the truth is that they are very important to the health of our rivers, estuaries, and lagoons. They provide many ecosystem services, such as filtering water. One oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. Can you imagine trying to drink that much? You would explode. The reefs they create provide habitat or a place to live for many different types of organisms. And these reefs also help to stabilize the shoreline or prevent the waves from hurting the shore. Unfortunately, reefs are in trouble all over the world. 85% of them are dead or dying. So what can we do about it? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hocamp, and I wanted to find out what could be done to help the oysters. I went to the Florida Oceanographic Society and talked to research scientist Dr. Vincent Nicomio, along with my lab partner, Angela Puccini. He told us about two different methods of oyster restoration that are being used here in the Indian River Lagoon. What is oyster restoration, I asked, and how do people come up with this idea? Oyster restoration involves building reefs for oyster spat, baby oysters, to settle on. Scientists came up with the idea by analyzing the requirements needed for oysters to survive based on objective scientific processes. However, they used creativity and discovery to come up with the different designs for the oyster restoration methods. How do you build an oyster reef? You start with oyster shell. Where do you get the oyster shell? Here in Florida, we get it from restaurants that serve oysters. We pick it up and bring it back to the lab where it has to stay for six weeks to make sure that there are no harmful bacteria. What do you do when the shell when it's ready? You fill mesh bags or attach it to mats. So how do you do that? Well, the shell used to be piled on the ground and a person would have to hold the mesh bag while another person shoveled the oysters into it. Now, thanks to creative thinking, it is placed on a table. No more shoveling, and there are holes in the table to fill the oyster bags with shell. Okay, we have filled our bags with oyster shell. Now we have to put them in the river. We load up the truck and arrive at the river. It is a long way to the boat and out to the area we want to use, and we have a lot of equipment. Well, we start with an old creative idea, the assembly line. Then we move to a new idea. We will use a float to transport it. More good thinking. We arrive and find the oyster bags have been knocked over by the waves. What can we do about this? We replace the bags and add another layer in a different direction. Now, does that not look good? Another part of oyster restoration is planting shore grass. In the beginning, people had to dig holes for planting. Now we use an auger. More creative thinking. So, what happens after you build the reef? It takes a little time, but slowly, small organisms come to live there, then larger organisms, and some moisture spat appears. After a couple of years, with no big complications, an artificial reef can look almost like a natural reef. So, what can we learn from this? While science is based on evidence, it has to have the creativity from scientists, real people, who create the means of getting the information needed objectively. Thanks to the creativity of current scientists and past scientists, there is more than one way to restore oysters, and we can look forward to future scientists using their creativity to make it even more successful. And finally, with the continued efforts of scientists and people interested in making a difference, we can help the oyster reefs get healthy again. But for more information on my research and other ocean scientists, go to coastyflorida.org.